Dear friends, it's so good to be with you, dear Dream Church family. I miss you every single day. I've been praying for you and I am asking God the things that you are asking for your families. You're asking more love. You're asking your relationships to be reconciled. And some of you are writing to me and my team and I are re just rejoicing because we are seeing a great growth in you. We are seeing God's fire burning in your hearts. We are seeing that in your families there's mending, there's healing, emotional healing. And people have been uh, suffering, suffering with emotional pain and wounds from the past hurts. They are writing to us and they are saying, I am set free. How good is that for us to hear it? I'm telling you. Uh, somebody wrote to us recently uh, from Yemen and he just received Christ through one of our programs and when I, just a simple note I know God because of you and another man from Ethiopia wrote to me and said I just received Christ and now I know the truth because of your programs and oh, I want to give all the glory and honor to Jesus Christ but I just want to tell you, you know how I feel? I feel like somebody put in my pocket one million dollars even more we are going to talk about this right now even somebody gave me more than that like somebody gave me the world you know there are times I talk to God and a lot of times I talk, talk to God but most of the time I tell him I love you so much I want to give you the world. Hey, wait a minute. The world is his. Everything in, in it is his. But you know, when you love someone, you want to give them the world. And this is what I can do for him. I just want to give him one soul at a time. And it is still him doing it. Because salvation is a supernatural experience. And only through the Holy Spirit of God, only through a revelation, People can receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, but you know, their hearts has to be open uh, to the truth. They want to search because God said, if you seek me, they need to be the seekers, right? So I am going to share with you today something very important and something part of my life, part of, it is my purpose in life, you know? How many of you know that it is, it's a horrible thing to live without a purpose? It's so boring to live without a purpose. And God gave me a purpose. One day I'm going to go to heaven and I'm going to bring as many million people, billions I can bring with me. This is my life's purpose. And my team, I believe so, each and every one of them, they have the same purpose because I can see we are united. We are a small team, but we get so much done by grace of God, by the strength of God, and because we abide in Him. Word says, abide in me, I abide in you, and you bear much fruit. So it is the key. You got to abide in Christ. You got, I go before him and I say, I'm abiding. I, I came here to remain in you. So you got to do these things, folks. And you're going to start just liking and loving to spend time with God. And this is my life's purpose, to be a soul winner. The Great Commission. It is so important for me that every single day of my life not only in front of the cameras but also behind the cameras i live my life to fulfill the great commission i live my life as a missionary and that is like so exciting i just want you to know even people that if after this program, I know that your mindset is going to change and you are like, I am going outside. I am going to walk on the streets. I am going to the supermarket. I am going to the inner cities, the highways and the byways because it is so not the way that people teach us and try to give us all these steps to become an evangelist. No, no. Some people have the gifts, okay? This is my calling, I told you. But we are all called... For the great commission we are called so what does it mean that you all are gonna go to afghanistan you are going some of you say no god forbid <laughs> don't say that don't say that i'm going to meet with a lady today i went to one of those places i mean the places that she could not uh, carry a bible with her but she had a great impact i, I am just really so looking forward meeting with her today but i just want to tell you this this is the commission, great commission. It is great. You know why? Because God is not giving us this wonderful message and this wonderful experience just for us to keep it, 
Keep it in. And not to share with anybody else. He wants us to go outside and raise a banner for him. Shout out loud. Maybe not. Always. And God is going to teach us tonight, I believe with this service, to how to become a soul winner, how to become a minister or a counselor, how to plant seed in people's lives, not being so robotic, not washing them with scriptures, but do it the way that he did it on earth. Can we share this tonight and can we get this fear out of the way? Earlier I spoke to you about the fear of man, fear of people. Let's throw this out the window. We don't need this fear. And we can do this as being ourselves, just being the way that we are with little bit seasoning, little bit grace, little more love. We can do this. We, and you know, that has a healing power in your hearts. If you are suffering with depression or depression tendencies and all these things, this will get your eyes off you outside of you and you start to see the world from the different eyes and you don't have time for depression you don't have time for pity parties you don't have time for any other stuff that is just keeping you down down and you need to start getting busy in the in the father's business this is all about it so Matthew 28 18 through 20 oh what is this then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Wow. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am always with you to the very end of the age. So he's saying, all authority is given to me. With that authority, I am sending you out. You are not going to stay. You are not going to be passive. You are not going to be in a box. No, I'm sending you out. Go and make disciples from all nations. Make disciples. He's not saying, just make them say the sinner's prayers. Which I do that a lot during my uh, life 3 programs. I do, I let people to the Lord. I pray with them. Nothing is wrong with them. But he's saying it is not enough. Not only planting a seed. Make disciples. Disciple them. You see these programs, what are they about? These are discipleship programs. We call them revival. Yes, we want the fire of God to come inside of your, our hearts. But we don't want to live a lukewarm life. We don't want to say we are happy where we are. And we don't want that. This is all about discipleship. Getting you to a deeper place with Christ. Getting you to a place that you never been. Getting you uh, to a place that maybe you used to be and you are missing that place. This is why you are going to this dry season and devil loves that, those dry seasons. As a matter of fact, he uses dry seasons to get you into depression, get you into suicide, get you into pity parties and to say, what am I doing? What is this life is about? Everything is meaningless. I am not fulfilled, I am angry, I am not loved, I am not this, I am not that, all this, I am not, I am not, I am not, me, 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 Who, uh, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, my husband is so insensitive to my feelings. But let me tell you, don't you think that I don't, uh, and I didn't go through those times, and there was a time I said no, there was a time I said no, and let me tell you this, before we go anywhere, there were times in my Christian marriage, didn't I say, haven't I suffered enough? I had two abusive marriages, once with a fanatical uh, Muslim abuser, beater, woman beater, and the other one was a drug abuser. Why me? Haven't I said that? Abuse in my household, in Turkey, by my parents? I mean, can, can I have a normal marriage now? Loving marriage? Haven't I said that? Yes. But then God brought me to a place and he told me like he told Job, embrace yourself like a man. Embrace yourself like a woman and stop these pity parties 
and get busy. I have a purpose for your life. S stop whining. Stop just complaining and becoming a chronic complainer. And turn to me. Turn to me. And let me tell you, the more I turn to him, the more my marriage got better. The more I turn to him, and there are times that my husband comes and he's like, I tell you, I'm so transparent with you. And he's like, <laughs> and I have a tendency to go to that place. Oh, no. Then I say, you know what? I'm not going to fix my eyes on this. I am going to fix my eyes on you and your business. And that gets me out of it right away. So I just want you to know the author who has the authority gave us a, he commissioned us. He, he gave us a great commission. And this is what we got to do. And he said, make disciples from all nations. He didn't tell us become a missionary. Listen, the concept of missionary is here, but he didn't tell us anything about missionary. The word missionary does not exist in the Bible, but the concept does. What is a missionary? Missionary word is simple. You have a mission. Who has a mission? Is a missionary. I have a mission in life. You have a mission. You should have a mission in life. Purpose. So when you have that, you're a missionary. You don't have to. Do you think that you, you stay in your own household and you don't go to another country? You are not a missionary? No. The world is out there. I promise you, wherever you are, you get out of your house, the mission field starts right there. Mission field even starts in your household. Mission field starts on Facebook. What you post, what you are promoting, what kind of bannerism you are doing to raise a banner for the Lord shows that if you are a missionary or not. You can become a missionary today. We can ordain you, commission you, everything is easy because Jesus already done it. <laughs> That's easy. Here, let's do it at the end of the program. We do it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's already done because Jesus has already done that. And I train a lot of missionaries. I train online missionaries. I, oh, what a pain. Do you know that? Especially training uh, Christians from the Western world, for my country, for my people, <laughs> for my culture. It's just, do you think it's easy? When people come, I have a calling. I want to go to this place. I want to go to this country and that country. And then I sit with that person. In five minutes, I said, you got to do this. I cannot do this. You gotta do this. And there were times I wanted to stop them going to third world countries. I wanted to stop people because they were not ready. And they have no clue about the warfare. No clue about hospitality. They are so still in themselves and they want to do something heroic on, on their resume. It will look good too if they spend two years in Turkey. If they spend a few years in uh, you know, Afghanistan or Pakistan, it will look very good on their resume. And they are not ready. They just want to do something great. But you need to see who is great in you is Jesus Christ to be able to do that. And I am not bashing anybody. I'm just being a good sister, good friend. Wounds of a friend is better than the kisses of the enemy. Kisses of the devil. You want Satan to kiss you today? Now, I want to be a true friend to you. We can do this. We can do it with the help and the grace of God. But we cannot do this alone. And we cannot do this with five steps, ten steps teachings. And they are all good if they have the Holy Spirit backing them up. What is one soul worth to you? What, what do you think? One soul. What is the worth of one single soul? If I bring you one person, one child, one prostitute, one drug addict, do you think that person's soul is a less worth, has a less worth than the one that is a housewife or an engineer? What do you think? Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. Sick needs a doctor, not for the healthy. So what do you think that one person on the face of the earth means to Jesus? 
you know scripture says that what is it uh, what is good for a man to gain the whole world but loses his own soul so you if you have the whole world it is not enough if you gain the whole world it is not equal to one man's soul it cannot save one single soul the whole world imagine you put the, all the revenues in the banks in one place all the revenues all the gold all the diamonds the 10 carats the 100 carats the whatever they are you put them all together in one place it can they cannot all together match and buy one single soul bring the mansions bring the bring the billions trillions of dollars you cannot buy a single soul this is how important one soul it is. And I want to tell you, you need to treat them so carefully. This is why sometimes I really get, if you want to see me upset, I, I really get upset at our online missionaries. Uh, so, you know, some uh, teams help us. The way that I see, the way that they write. I said, you got to treat that one single soul so carefully. And have I not failed in that? Yes, I did many times but i want to teach them don't do that don't fail to see that one single soul so valuable so and treat them so carefully don't do it just to do it this is what i want to tell you don't do it just to do it don't you know even quote john 3 16 just to quote it and, and by the way it means nothing to an unbeliever we cannot do these things, people. We cannot preach the gospel religiously with a religious spirit like Pharisees. If anything needs to go out of the window today, it's a religious spirit. A religious spirit. You cannot do this religiously. Let's stop right now and say, Lord, I confess that I have a religious spirit and I want you to remove this religious spirit from me. I don't want any religious spirit. I repent from religious spirit in the name of Jesus. I don't want that. I rebuke that right now in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to be a soul winner, even in your family. So many family members don't want to become Christians because of the religious spirit and legalism on their family members. They don't want to become like that. A lot of kids from the Christian's home, they don't want to serve Christ. They, they want to be in the world. They want to become Buddhist, Satanist. You would be surprised how many Christian families, they have pagan children. You know why? You think that, oh, for coming from a Christian home. But you were not in that home. You were not grow up in that home. If you did, you, you didn't want to become like those Christians either. Again, oh, I'm sorry, I'm hurting you. Wounds of a friend is better than the kisses of the enemy. When they look at their parents, how religious they are, they don't want to become like that. Or how worldly they are, they want to become like, like that. And they are in the world. You see, you need to be the real deal. If you are not the real deal, they don't want to become. People recognize that. You cannot sell something to someone that you don't believe in that product. And this is a simple thing. I studied it in business when I was studying business. You cannot sell it. You got to believe that. And imagine we are not selling Jesus. We are giving him free of charge and people don't want to buy that. People don't want to receive that. Why? Yes, they have hardened hearts. Yes, they want to be in a wicked lifestyle. Yes, 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 yes. But when they look at you, they don't want to become like you. Because you are not like Jesus. We are not like Jesus. We are religious people. Worldly and religious. Oh. Jesus Christ should be our role model as a missionary and it starts with love and how are we supposed to love scripture says love is patient love is kind love is not rude hey rude Christians love is not rude love is kind it is patient it doesn't keep the records of wrong wrongs you don't keep a record no and people look at you and say, I mistreated this person and she's still so nice to me. He's still so nice to me. How come? 
and then they ask you. That is the nice part. Love, it starts with love. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, everything, and love your neighbor as your son. That neighbor is a pagan. That neighbor is a Buddhist. That neighbor is a Hindu, Muslim. That neighbor, love them as yourself. Be considerate. Consider, other, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look into others' interests, not into your own interests, but interests of others. Your attitude should be the as, same as that of Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Who being in appearance of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. You see, take Jesus Christ as your role model. Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Follow me. Simple. Follow Jesus. You want to be a soul winner? Follow Jesus. This is what I do. Missionary organizations come. Christians come. Churches come. And they, they ask me, how do you do this? How we can reach out to your people? Come and teach these things. I say, follow Jesus. This is what I do. I follow Jesus' model, role model. Who is your role model? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it, it, isn't it so simple? And then we become so, so much like the world. We need to have this like big conferences. How to be a soul winner. Come on. Jesus said, follow me. I will make you fisherman of men. You will fish men. You know? This pastor and I were talking. He was asking me, you work a lot. Do you, have, do you do things that you like? Do you have hobbies? And I said, yes. I love to paint. I love to read. I, I love what I do. But I like to walk. I can walk, 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 walk. I can walk miles. I love, I love walking and listening to my uh, Bible. And then... I said, what do you like to do? He said, I love to fish. I go once a month fishing. I like what kind of fishing? He likes spear fishing, fishing, you know, with a pole. He likes all that kinds of fishing. I said, I love fishing too. He's like, really? I said, yes, I fish every day. <laughs> he understood. I'm a fisherman too. You see? This is, this is not only a work for me, it's not only a job, this is not only something that I get paid or something, no, this is, a, this is my lifestyle, Fish, I am a fisherman, I am a fisherwoman, so you can be like that, and maybe this is not your hobby, but it can become, once you start tasting it, you're gonna like it. What we need to become a soul winner? We need compassion. If you don't have compassion, you cannot do it. I'm sorry. If you don't have compassion and you want to fulfill the Great Commission, then pray for it. Pray for compassion. One thing about Jesus was so amazing. He had amazing, great compassion. He moved with compassion. You need compassion. We are talking about Jesus here. Follow him. Follow him. Have his compassion. What does that compassion create? It's a burden. And then you pray with a burden. Without compassion, you cannot have the burden. You need to have that burden to pray. So you don't pray these dry toast prayers. Dry, dry, dry prayers. No. You pray in tears. You will move. Your heart will move. Jesus filled with compassion over Jerusalem and he wept. And God the Father answered his prayers. When he prayed for Lazarus, he was in his tomb. He was dead for three days. He was smelling bad. It was the fourth day. And Jesus cried. He said, you always hear my prayers. So you got to have that kind of compassion. It is not emotionalism, but God uses our emotions for us to pray. 
You know, you see so many emotionalism in the church, then you, you want to be caught normal. What is normal? <laughs> I read this book. I read it, 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 this book's title. Everybody is normal until you get to know them. Everybody is normal until you get to know them. So forget about being normal. Jesus was not normal. John the Baptist <laughs> was not a normal man. So forget the normal. We're going to do things. They are not normal. And including crying, even crying on the street. Who cares? Then, passion. Compassion and burden creates passion. Comes from love. Excessive amount of love. You know, Christ, passion of Christ. What a good title for a movie about Jesus Christ. And communication. It's so important how you communicate. Jesus Christ still is the best communicator. He's, he's an individual God. And he communicates with every one of us in a different way. There's a way that he communicates to me. There's a way he communicates to you. But you want to become a great communicator? You need to become like Jesus Christ. You know, the, one of the things about great communication is humility. I learned all these things from Jesus. All these things. He's the best communicator. How he communicated? He's vulnerable. He was humble. He didn't wash people with scriptures. He went to the Samaritan woman. He spoke at the well with the Samaritan woman in a different way. He was not condemning. He was caring. He cared for people. How did Jesus do? What would Jesus do? This, that's it. He cared. If we don't care for people, why they should care for our message? You're going to care for people. He loved people. He cared people. He was compassionate about people. You know, first thing we think about miracles. No, if you have these things, miracles will come. Because you are becoming like Jesus. The more you become like Jesus, miracles will follow. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you do what I do. And you will even do greater things than these. But even do you do what I do doesn't mean that only, yes, it means that too, not only walking on water, healing the sick, raise, raising the dead, cleansing the leprosy, opening the eyes of the blind, but also be, be becoming like him in his love, compassion, imitating Christ and loving like Jesus did. Showing grace like Jesus showed grace. Showing mercy like Jesus showed mercy. He didn't condemn the adulterous woman, but he said, who doesn't sin, cast the first stone. You see, when we become like Jesus Christ, we are becoming better soul winners and miracles will happen. We don't have to seek anything. We, need, we only need to seek Jesus. We need, only need to follow Jesus. If you become like Jesus in your household, <laughs> Do you think anybody doesn't want Jesus? If you become like Jesus, and there were people who didn't reject Jesus, there will be always people rejecting Jesus. But let's try this first, becoming like Jesus. Becoming like Jesus Christ. Before you look at someone with your discrimination, with your prejudice, you cannot have prejudice towards gays, towards homosexuals. You are going to love them. You're going to allow them to a point that they, they have to ask you, why are you so loving? I never seen any person loving like you. You know how many gays, how many lesbians I minister to and if, during my Christian walk? And this is another study because I studied, I went to seminars about them. I, because I care for them. I care for their salvation. You gotta, we got to do this right, folks. We, can, we cannot do this religiously. It's not going to work. If you don't have love, if you don't have compassion, it's not going to work. What about vulnerability? Talking about our pains, being open and honest about our struggles without having fear how people are going to judge us. No, we cannot do this. We must really become like Jesus. Real, real deal, real deal. What needs to be done in a heart of a missionary, soul winner or a minister? We need to have pure hearts. We need to have loving hearts. 
We need to come to a place in our work that not only being real with people, real with God, real with ourselves. Know who you are. In the past, there were things that I asked the Lord. I'm so glad that his answer was no, because I didn't know myself, but God knew me. He knew all about me and everything about me. He knows me. He knows you. Know yourself. Know yourself. There are times I say, I said to myself, no, today is not the day. I'm going to push. And don't be pushy. Here is a big thing. Don't be pushy with the gospel. Plant the seed like a farmer. Throw the seed. Next day you throw more seed. Throw more love. Throw more grace. Throw more caring. Loving. Being considerate. Then another day, throw more other seeds. But these are all God's seeds, good seeds. So don't be pushy. You don't have to be pushy. You need to be patient and you need to understand salvation is a supernatural experience. You cannot make that happen. You are only going to be a vessel. You are only going to be a pen in God's hands. That's it. Do you make people comfortable? Are people comfortable around you? I am not talking about not offending people. When you talk about Jesus, you are going to offend some people. But still, even though you may have differences, people must feel loved. People must feel accepted and embraced. This is so important, folks. These are the things I teach to mission missionaries. I want to become a missionary. <laughs> Hospitable. I mean, I went to this Middle Eastern conference and this man was years ago. He prepared, he put, you know, overseas. I went to this big thing and big people came. But the main person who was doing this conference put it together. I said to me, myself, Jesus, help this man. If he was the one witnessing to me when I was a Muslim, I would never become a Christian. This is what I said. He had no grace. He had no love. I mean, even in, in and he was the main person, the head guy running this conference. It was like no hospitality, no, no, no friendliness, nothing. Oh, maybe you say it was not in his personality. I even, it, later on, I confronted the situation and I, because they asked my opinion. <laughs> and let me tell you, I said, if hospitality was not your gift, you should have find people with that gift to welcome people. I mean, if you you have a you have fear of people. You have issues. Before you get free, you cannot do this. If you have, I talked to you earlier about if having fear of people. You cannot have fear of people if you are going to be an evangelist. If you are going to talk to people about Jesus Christ, you know. Do you know I am an introvert? You wouldn't believe that. But you cannot, uh, you know. Put your ministry or your calling based on, you know, like I'm an introvert. I'm, I have a shy person. I'm timid. I cannot. It's all about sacrifice. It's all about obeying the call. Once you start obeying, you're going to be stretched. It's going to be sometimes painful. And I'm to only talking about the deliverer of the message. What about the people when they reject you, when they insult you, when they mock you? Are you going to quit? You know how many people insult me, belittle me, and uh, how I look, even uh, what I say, how I speak, everything. Okay, then, if I am going to let my feelings, you know, rule over me, then I have to quit. There was a time at the beginning when I started doing uh, TV, live TV programs to the Middle East. I was receiving all this terrible, terrible, and I still receive even more so now. I mul multiply of the harvest, multiply by enemies multiplied. I mean, I receive hundredfold here, hundredfold the devil, new level, new devil. A lot of preachers say that. And then, listen to me. One day I sat down and I start crying. Oh, poor me, Lord. How I am going to preach the gospel? Look at these people. They are so mean. 
they hurt my feelings. And there are still days that I get hurt. I am still a human. And then at that time, God spoke to my heart and said, you better quit now. I'm like, this must be the devil. Is this you, Lord? You hear the gentle but firm voice. He said, you better quit from the beginning. Because you, you will be persecuted for my sake. You will be persecuted. I promise you, you will be persecuted. Cry, get hurt, pray, release it to the Lord, get up, bounce back and do it again. You cannot quit every time you get rejected. You do it again. You try it again. You try it again. You never give up. Okay, I want to close with the things that I teach to our team. Okay, our missionary team and our soul winner team and other people. These are the things that I want to share with you. Hug people with your words. Love of Christ. Hug them with your words. Throw kindness like confetti. Not quantity, but quality responses to minister to people. Quality with love. Don't go from, oh yeah, and then move to another person. No. Stay with one person. Everybody is somebody to Jesus Christ. I learned this from the person who mentored me for the street ministry, inner city ministry. So be that person that who cares. And then pour, pour out God's love on people. Treat even some Christians, you need to treat them like baby Christians. They are still in their diapers. So they don't like confrontation. They don't like uh, rebuke. They don't like correction. You cannot win people from the beginning if they, you start like correcting them. They, the first thing they say, you are condemning. You are too condemning. So people don't know what is correction, what is condemning. And you need to take it easy. You need to be gentle with those people. If someone is repenting, praying, they have a problem, don't go, yeah, you got to do this and that. No, hug those people. They are already in a broken place. Some Christians, they just, I, I used to see some missionaries, somebody's confessing their sins. They are like, yeah, you better read the New Testament, this chapter, and don't wash people with scriptures. I tell my team, don't wash them. Jesus never washed people with scriptures. Once you get their ears, when, once they are interested, once they are hungry, you created the hunger and thirst in them. And they want to know more than share the word of God. There was a woman one, a long time ago uh, and I was reading how they, my team were ministering. And it was not even my team, another organization. And this woman had a brain tumor with three children. And she was writing, she was asking for a prayer request. And the, Online missionary wrote back and said, oh, I'm, he didn't even say I'm sorry or anything. And immediately sent the electronic link of, of the Bible. Read this. You're going to find all your answers here. Really? Immediately I said almost, how dare are you? You talk to someone with a brain tumor, three children, and you are saying, read the Bible. No, first you need to hug that person with your words. I'm so sorry for what you are going through. I love you so much. Uh, you know, I want you to feel God's love right now. And God can help you here. But I am praying for you. Write your prayer. Show them you care. And tell people when they are hurting, I'm sorry. They need to hear, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your pain. Tell them in many words, I truly care. Pray to show, pray. If you don't have empathy, show, pray for that. Be their spiritual cheerleader. Isn't it nice? I tell the people these things. Listen, don't debate with people. You can win a debate, you can win a debate, and you can lose the heart of the person. You don't want to debate. I don't believe in insulting people's other religions and, uh, you know, coming from other religion, insulting them. I don't believe in that you can win. You can get a lot of responses, but so many little fruit insulting people. 
But anyway, you, our message will be offensive. You need to understand the difference. You don't aim to insult, but when you tell the truth, truth will hurt. Truth will be offensive. So I just want to encourage you today. Love people. Just love people. Can we be nicer people? I always pray. I want you to know this. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. Some of the fruit we pray. Some of the fruit we don't ask. And we don't put into practice. And two good ones are kindness and gentleness. And a lot of Christians, they lack these two fruit. And I always ask. Every single day, I promise you, I ask. God is my witness. Give me gentleness and kindness. Because coming from Muslim background, this is not an easy thing for me. And every day I ask. I am going to meet with someone difficult that I know they are so harsh, so hard. And I say, Lord, give me gentleness and kindness. There are so many things that I teach, ang you know, how to deal with angry comments and all that. But I want to tell you one thing. Be like Jesus. Follow Jesus. Imitate Jesus. Love like Jesus. And always, always communicate like Jesus. I love you. God bless you. I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost right now for all over you. That you will feel the joy of the Lord in your heart. That you can talk to everybody. And you can care for their needs. You can just compliment them. Encourage them. Be their cheerleader. Because people are hurting. May God give you His eyes. So you can see people through His eyes. May He... May God give you, Jesus gives you his heart so you can feel what he feels for those people, for everyone around you, including your household. Today, know that mission field starts outside of your home, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Mission field starts in your household. Be a missionary, be a soul winner in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you.